attracted a circle of admirers. He made a living as a maths tutor to the sons of nobles, and in these years he developed a passion for wine, which he described as moisture held together by light. But his academic career was not going so well. In this room in Pisa University, he was always challenging his professors. They wanted him to learn the teachings of the Greek philosopher Aristotle without questioning them. But the more he examined Aristotle's ideas, the more Galileo thought they were hokum. For example, Aristotle refused to accept the idea that ice was lighter than water. He said that it floats because it can't part the water particles. So Galileo, who loved flouting Aristotelian physics, got himself immediately a bucket of water. He got himself a lump of ice. He pushed the ice to the bottom of the bucket of water, released it, and it floated up to the top. You see, says Galileo, it can part the water. Galileo left university without getting a degree. The Catholic Church decreed that disagreeing with Aristotle was heretical. This was the era of the fearsome Inquisition, a religious thought police who imprisoned, tortured and even burned heretics alive. <laughs> But this didn't stop Galileo. He now attacked an idea that was central to Aristotle's physics. Aristotle believed heavy things fall faster than light ones. On the face of it, Aristotle's right. A hammer, for instance, undeniably drops much faster than a feather. But Aristotle made no mention of the effect of the air, and this bothered Galileo. Galileo started doing experiments. He dropped objects of different weights, but of more similar shape than hammers and feathers. Over short distances, at least, the balls seemed to hit the ground together. But Galileo realised a man's height was too short a drop to be conclusive. Next to a Tuscan church tower, I joined Professor Settle to discover the next stage in Galileo's investigation. Step by step, Galileo also began dropping things from high places, a high balcony <laughs> or uh, quite a high yeah. tower. There's a story that he did this uh, from the Leaning Tower of Pisa. Yeah. We don't know whether that's actually true or not, but any high place yeah. will do. OK, well, we've got Geraldo up there standing in for Galileo's gopher. Ready. We ready? Right. OK, drop him. Well, the uh, heavy metal ball did drop before the... Uh, the lighter red cricket ball. Well, about that much. It seems Aristotle's right. The heavy ball does fall more quickly. But Galileo felt, just as with the feather, air resistance was confusing things. Okay, drop her! Galileo's next step was to devise an historic experiment, one that would allow him to work out what really happens when things fall. It would make him the father of modern science. This simple arrangement created the method used in all scientific experiments. First, Galileo decided to roll the balls down a slope rather than drop them. This minimizes the effect of air resistance. Then he designed a brilliantly simple way of measuring time, a bucket of water with a plug hole and a measuring cylinder under it. 
What he did was roll the ball down the slope from the top, and when it reached the end, he'd stop his timer by cutting off the flow of water. So the amount of water collected represents the time the ball took to fall. So he'd have done it like this, wouldn't he? He'd let that go and take his finger off at the same time. Correct. <laughs> With this simple device, Galileo raised the stakes in his battle with Aristotle. According to Aristotle, a heavy ball rolls faster than a light one, so less water will be collected. According to Galileo, all balls will roll down the ramp in the same time, and so the water collected will be the same. The cricket ball is much lighter than the metal one. Let battle commence. Beautiful sample there, Professor. Galileo did this experiment over and over again, and no matter the weight of the ball, it always took the same time to roll down the slope. In many ways, Galileo is the founder of the modern understanding of motion and mechanics and physics with a set of apparently simple but very profound experiments. You can unlock the mysteries of mass, speed, acceleration, force. This is all G Galileo's legacy. Galileo showed that simply observing what we see on Earth can mislead, but experiment can reveal the truth. I guess one of the reasons uh, we got here today was because of a gentleman named Galileo a long time ago who made a rather significant discovery about falling objects. And we thought that uh, where would be a better place to confirm his uh, findings than on the moon? In 1971, when Apollo 15 went to the moon, the astronauts took a hammer and a feather and showed us what Galileo's scientific instinct had told him three and a half centuries earlier. They'll hit the ground at the same time. How about that? 